Hello and welcome back. So I've been getting a lot of messages from friends asking me about the Aboriginal languages spoken in Australia. And uh, so I've decided to give a short intro to at least one of them and to give you an idea of what they're like and why these languages have to be protected at all costs. I mean, it's a pity to lose them uh, because many of them are endangered. And the sad thing is a lot of Australians non-Aboriginal Australians have no idea about these languages. So we'll take a look. Now, if we look at a linguistic map of all the languages spoken in Australia, and we try to group them into families, kind of like the way in Europe where most languages are Indo-European, uh, in, in the Arabian Peninsula, Arabic is Semitic and, and all that. If we look at Australia, we see a very, very strange pattern about 90% of all the languages, so that's the area in uh, this indigo area over here, this huge, pretty much 90% of the country, actually speak languages belonging to a family called Pamanyungan. And the weird thing is, you see, it's spread out across the whole continent with a very, very small number of languages that are non-Pamanyungan. So let's take a look at how this situation came about. It, it looks as if like one whole family just spread out across the whole continent and you've got a small, uh, a corner. In fact, there are also pockets of Pamanyungan uh, spoken right up here at the top of the continent as well. So you see a very, very strange pattern. Um, let's let's see how this came about and, and all the theories that we have. OK, so there are roughly 300. Uh, I say 300 roughly because depending on how you classify them, you know, what is, what is a language or what is a dialect and all that. But of these 300 languages, about 23 language families exist, plus nine isolates, meaning that nine of these languages spoken in, in, in the, the north uh, west corner of Australia are not found any are not related to any other languages anywhere else on Earth. And you've got one family that's spread out across like 90 percent of the continent. So it's a very unique situation. Um, some people say that these languages sort of evolved from one same ancestor and split out over the last 40, 50,000 years into many other languages. Maybe that's what happened. Other people say that the Pamanyungan were the original languages, the original language family spoken in Australia, and the other groups, the non pamanyungan came in from the north, from what is now Papua New Guinea and maybe what is now Indonesia before the rise of the Austronesian languages to come and colonize the area many, many theories abound. But the weird thing is, no matter which family they belong to, all Australian languages share quite a lot of similarities. And we'll take a look at them, okay, uh, over the next few slides. Now, among them, most languages have only three vowels, a, e, u, and a, e, u, and variations of that, similar to languages like classical Arabic, similar to languages like Greenlandic, only three vowels. Uh, there are no voicing contrasts. Well, we'll take a look at what this means, okay? And no fricative sounds. And a lot of R sounds. Australian languages love the R sound. R, R, R. These sounds are very, very, very common throughout the languages. And we see also a pattern called ergative absolute. Well, we'll take a look at this as we go along. So just bear with me. Uh, and let's take a look at one language. So the language we're looking at, okay, is called Warburi. Uh, Warburi is spoken in this uh, roughly... I'm very bad at drawing maps, so please forgive me. Roughly yellow area over here, the Northern Territory. And it is one of the more vibrant languages spoken by about 3,000 people. And it's still being learned by children, which is wonderful. All right. Now, the phonology, here we go. Okay, so take a look at the phonology. I'm assuming that you speak more than one language. Okay, you, you probably speak, you know, your language and English and something else. So, so just compare this chart with the chart of your native language, for example, what is missing or what, what is there? You're going to see that in addition to the, there's no B, there's no D, there are no G sounds. Uh, that's because Aboriginal languages have no contrast between voice and voiceless consonants. So what this means is uh, a sound can sound like a P or a B, depending on a position in the word, a T or a D, that kind of thing. You're going to notice another interesting column here. This is the post alveolar. So these sounds are not really common in Europe, except maybe in some dialects of Swedish and Norwegian. Um, they're very common in India. So if you listen to Indian people when they pronounce certain words, da, da, na, la, these sounds are also very common in Australia. Not found in all languages, but they're pretty common enough. Another feature is the R sounds. There are many, many, many R sounds. Uh, Walbury has three R sounds. This is pronounced R, 
this is r r so r r and r r r r um the only language i know that has this r sound i think would be uh, the the language or the languages of india i think hindi has words like this like you say the word for big barda barda the r sound is this one the rd sound okay and all this is ta na la common more common in indian languages than in european languages um another peculiarity that you find across australia is the j sound so these sounds are all pronounced with the tongue the tip of your tongue pressed down against the bottom front teeth the bottom of your teeth and the middle of the tongue presses up against the roof so it's ja 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 nya ya so ja nya ya just to give you a quick example another compared to uh what is it the the languages in europe for example the sound nga is very common just like in austronesian languages it, and you it, it occurs everywhere nga at the beginning at the end of a word in the middle of a word it's very very common for a word to start with nga like ngappa which means water ngappa all right and the other most important thing you notice you probably notice there are no fricative sounds there's one very very big thing it, uh, australia is probably the continent where more lang more languages than any other place in, on earth have no fricative sound s sh z v f h no h no 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 s no you know none of these sounds that are, are made uh with the, this fricative kind of s sh z this kind of friction they don't exist and the only language that has them uh, called kalalago yeah i don't have it on the map but i'll I could probably talk about it in, in another video is spoken right at the north and the Torres Strait Islands close to Papua New Guinea and this language has been influenced by Papuan languages so that's why it's got the uh, sounds otherwise they don't exist so that's very interesting uh, you know an interesting feature of Australian languages okay all right let's move on so looking at some words that are very common this is from Warbury so you see how uh, different the phonology can be so uh, there's a there's a distinction between l as in pili which means a wooden dish from pili pili is a stone or a hill mata means tired but mirta means shield mirta kanda is a bush coconut a type of plants and kanda which is a woman so kanda and kanda okay and walu and walu 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 so walu is a head walu is fire or firewood And another feature that you probably won't find in languages of Europe, and certainly not in the languages of Southeast Asia, the Austronesian languages like Malay, Indonesian, and Tagalog, and all the languages in the Philippines, is this feature. So I'm going to say it out slowly. The word for far is pinga, pinga, and slow is pinga, pinga. Cave is pingi. pingi. So what happens is you see the n sound, and this is a n, a n, and a n. And these sounds occur right next to a K. You, you don't find this in in, in uh, European languages or in, in most languages uh, in the Austronesian family. Okay, you say internal. You don't say internal or internal. It sounds wrong, right, uh, to most languages in the world. But not in Australia. In Australia, you can find lots and lots of these sounds where the 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 N sound, the nasal sound, the N N M, they're all produced in a different part of the mouth from the next consonant that's right next to it. So pinga. The word for possum, changanba, changanba. So notice that the P and the K, they tend to become more like a B and a G when it's next to a nasal sound, na, na, ma, na. So, chalanba, chalanba is a tongue. Wanga, wanga is, a, is raw, uncooked, and wonga. Wonga means language or talk. And, and these are the L sounds, milpa, which is I, yulpa, and chenilga. Chenilga is a grasshopper. Okay, to show you how the sounds and how the language goes. All right, more examples. Okay, so now we're giving some examples of how the language is put together. So you have simple words. Um, this is what you would call an equational sentence, or uh, in English, it, it requires the verb to be. Okay, so the word what day means man, and mata, mata is a noun. Uh, many people think that Walbury doesn't have adjectives, so that the the, the descriptive words, ad, the adjectives like mata, tired, are actually nouns. They're actually objects, a, a tired person or tired animal. So what the mata means, the man is tired. That's it. What the mata? It'd be very similar to how uh, Indonesian does it, or how um, Arabic does it, or language like Russian, for example. In the present tense, there's no. You don't need to put a verb. Just two nouns together. What the mata? All right. 
in the past tense it gets a bit complicated so the way they say the past tense is what if I jamata? okay so you have the word for man which is what day you have this which is very important it's called the auxiliary and, and and this is one of the most important elements of the grammar it shows among other things the tense in this case the past tense we're gonna look at it as more examples come by in future future videos Ninatya means to sit in a past tense and matta so it literally means man sits tired and that's how you say uh, the man is tired the word to sit in this case is used for uh, to describe uh, what in English would be the copula or the verb to be okay and and very often this word will change depending on the object and also whether the man is lying down he's standing up we'll look at it as we go along so this is an example the future tense will you say it like this so what is man gabu is future it shows the future Ninami is sit but it's used for verbs that are not past so the the the, the forms of the verb Warbury has less sort of different verb forms than languages uh, in Europe, for example. There's usually a past tense form and then a, a form that's used for non-past. And that's something that resembles an infinitive and a couple of others and that's it. Really not not less than uh, less than half a dozen forms or so compared with European languages. Okay, but that's not the complicated part. We'll, we'll come to that later on. All right. So this is an example. How do you say it? Okay, the man uh, will be tired. Okay, Ninami means tired or is tired, will be tired. Tired, okay. Uh, sorry, Nyanami means to sit. Nyanami Marta will be tired. Uh, is tired, all right? And it means a man sits tired or will sit tired. Anyway, uh, let me move along. Okay, so the thing about Walbury is that, and and many Austronesian languages have a strict word. I'm talking about Austronesian languages have a strict word order. Australian languages have a free word order. This is the contrast between the two groups, all right? Uh, in in Polynesian languages, for example, across the sea, the verb always comes in front, right? In Australian languages, many of them have very, very free word order to the point where you get things like this. So we're going back to the old uh, the question, the, the sentence we had just now. The man was tired. This is just one way to say. You can also say. Uh, so sit man tired. You can rearrange the sentence in any way you want. That also means the man is tired. Uh, you can say watilpa mata ninaja and you can say matalpa wati ninaja all these uh, all these sentences mean the exact same thing so so many australian languages have a completely free word order you can rearrange the sentence the subject the verb the object can go it goes anywhere in any sentence and it will still make sense the only thing you remember is that the auxiliary is often after the first word it, it's in the we call position two the second position which is always the second part of the sentence is always an auxiliary that shows the tense uh, but we'll look more and more examples come along we'll show you it gets a bit complicated to understand and it's a little bit different from what you used to um i always tell people that generally if you know latin or greek or maybe even russian or hungarian you know what i mean like like generally the most important word or the most focused word will come in front the most like new information or something will come in front we'll look at it uh, as more examples come along and and you know, so yeah, so this is one of the some of the key features of Australian Aboriginal languages. Um, I'm probably going to stop now because my batteries are dying, but we'll get to more examples in later videos. Okay, so uh, but thank you very much for now. Uh, if you're interested, please subscribe <laughs> uh, to the channel, and I'll give you more and more information about Aboriginal languages. Um, I will also get a native speaker of Warburi to come and maybe talk about his language and culture, uh, say a few sentences because I'm obviously not native. So you know, and talk a bit about how the language is. Uh, the situation of the language, for example, in Northern Territory. And also remember that a lot of Aboriginal people are, are actually polyglot. They speak different languages, uh, neighboring languages, and uh, it, it's, it's almost natural for them to be, to be, to be multilingual. Right? This is a very different situation from, uh, I guess, non-Aboriginal Australians, for example. Um, we'll, we'll get to know more about this in, in later videos. Uh, thank you for now and my batteries are dying. Okay. Thank you for thank you for listening and until next time. Bye